In this video, we look at the characteristics of the common source amplifier. Of the three amplifier configurations, common source is the most widely used of the three. This configuration supplies most of the voltage gain when talking about or when using uh, discrete transistors to provide amplification. Again, the characteristics or the, the uh, configuration consi consists of the signal to be amplified connected to the, drain, to the gate, and then the output is taken at the drain. We create the small signal or the AC model by replacing the, the transistor with, in this case, the hybrid Pi model. From observation, because the signal is connected directly to the gate, the input resistance for the common source amplifier is infinite. Because no current is going into it, the input resistance to the amplifier, Vn, is equal to just the signal voltage itself. There is no voltage division taking place between the input resistance and the uh, the internal resistance of our, so of our signal source. It's worth remembering, though, that because, it's not, because the, uh, the signal is not going to be subdivided at all, we need to remind ourselves that all of this is dependent upon the small signal approximation, and that is that the signal coming in must be less than um, two times the overdrive voltage. You'll recall that um, came about back when we were deriving the, trans the relationships between the overdrive and the nonlinear um, the nonlinear characteristic of the transform of the transistor, and we said that as long as we constrain the input voltage to be relatively small, i.e., less than two times the overdrive voltage, we could have or we had a good linear approximation at the bias point. The output resistance, capital R zero, is seen or is determined by deactivating the source and then looking back into the output. In other words, the output resistance is just the Thevenin resistance for the amplifier. We determine that by deactivating the source and looking back in. By deactivating the signal source here, this current source then has zero current and is effectively an open circuit. And the output resistance then is seen to be simply the parallel combination of our drain resistor, R sub D, with little r0, the early effect resistance. We can determine the open circuit gain, A V0, which is defined as V out over V in with no load resistance connected, by looking here and realizing that VGS is just the input voltage, which is the signal voltage. We have then that V out is equal to negative G sub M V in times the parallel combination of R0 and R sub D. V out is this current flowing in this direction, thus the negative sign, that's, so this is, there is an inversion in sign in this amplifier, times the parallel combination of those two resistors. So AV0 then is V out over V in, drop the minus sign there, AV0 then is equal to negative G sub M times the parallel combination. Now, A sub V is the voltage gain with a load resistance connected. In this configuration, the load resistance is in parallel with the drain resistance and the early effect resistance. So AV0 is basically the same thing as or, I'm sorry, AV is about the same thing as AV0, only now we bring in parallel this R sub L, or we get then that A sub V, which is V out over V in with the load resistance is equal to negative G sub M times R0 parallel R sub D parallel R sub L. And finally, we can get the overall gain, which is the output to the input signal, or gain is equal to V out over V sig. But because there's no current coming into here because of the infinite input resistance, the input voltage V in equals V, the signal um, voltage, and G then is simply equal to A sub V, which is that. 
Let's summarize this. The Kama Source Amplifier has a high input resistance and therefore it doesn't load down the source. That's a plus. The output resistance, though, is relatively high. Remember, we want to keep R sub D high because our gain is proportional to R sub D. But the output resistance is also proportional to R sub D. So it's a, you know, there's a conflict of uh, c competing desires here. Um, we'd like to have the output resistance small, which means R sub D ought to be small, but we want to keep the gain up, so that means R sub D needs to be big. The bottom line is, is that the common source amplifier has a relatively large output resistance, and that's a drawback. We're going to see that later on when we look at the common drain, the common drain amplifier has a small output resistance and is frequently used as a, a, a buffering amplifier for the common source. We also note that the amplifier gain for the common source amplifier is relatively large. Thus, it's the common source amplifier that produces most of the amplitude gain or most of the voltage gain in uh, analog circuits using MOSFET amplifiers. Finally, this type of amp, or, yeah, not finally, but just saying it again, this type of amplifier is widely used to supply the voltage gain.